So welcome back to Outdoors with the Morgans. I hope everyone's having a good day so far. Now in the last video, I told you it was going to be the last time that you saw the Rex 600X processor, and that was wrong. And I was wrong because the weather guessers were wrong. They said it was going to be pouring down rain this morning about 6 a.m. Here it is about 8.30, 9 o'clock, no rain. I do think some is coming later on, so I figured I'd come down here, crank out another quart of firewood real quick. This is beautiful stuff right here. I would say this is about 90% uh, red oak and white oak, and the other 10% is maple. I don't think there's any cherry in this at all. That right there will definitely fill that whole bay right there. Maybe, maybe even then some, you know? Yeah, that's a lot of wood. Got to be at least three, three and a half full cords there. Each bay holds about three cords. Now in the last video I mentioned it took me about 25 or 30 cords uh, to figure something out that I should have figured out sooner. I have found a way with this machine to really be able to size the firewood the way that I want. When I have one of those real big rounds that barely fits through there, uh, I take a little bit off the side turn it quarter turn do that again quarter turn those pieces are larger and then I have a nice square chunk that I keep working and rotating you have to push it ahead anyways it doesn't take much time at all just give it a quarter turn and you can look on that wedge and see where the wedge is on the other side and I can get a nice variety of bigger pieces smaller pieces exactly the way that I want it but anyway, it is Tuesday morning right now. You're going to see this video on Saturday. By then, I'm pretty sure this will be gone. Depending on the weather, I may use it a little bit more. I still have a bunch of firewood poles to go through. Uh, we've got a whole bunch out in the woods yet, mostly maple and cherry. Uh, but if it rains, we're not going to be able to get out there and get them. But that stuff, you know, the maple and cherry... Heck, I can cut and split that at the end of March, and it'll still be plenty dry by next fall. This oak right here, this will not be used next winter. It will be for the following winter. All right, it is first thing in the morning, and we're getting ready to load the Rex up. It's heading out. Now, they're bringing a big truck, so I thought it would be best if uh, we load somewhere else. I think it'd have trouble getting in here with a tractor trailer. So, with that being said, I got it hooked up to the GMC and I got an empty parking lot in town. That's where we're headed. Alright, so the driver should be here shortly, uh, but I'm sitting at my old stomping grounds. This is an old uh, elementary school. This is actually the school that I went to when I was a kid. They recently uh, closed this one and built a big one, big new one out the road. But yeah, that would have been 40, 45 years ago I went to this school been here a long time if you would have told me 45 years ago that I'd be here in the year 2024 loading up a firewood processor from Australia on a truck headed to New York I would have thought you're crazy
I got back from uh, loading up the Rex firewood processor. The uh, driver, real nice guy, came from Long Island. Uh, it's about seven and a half hours away, I believe. But he had a real nice Peterbilt. Uh, but anyway, I got back to the house here, and it's time to start cleaning up the wood yard. Right here, I'm in the lower wood yard, I call it. And I am digging a new fire pit. You need to do that every once in a while. Uh, the old one is behind the excavator here in this clip. And I'm digging a new pit and I'm burying the old one. And I'm just starting to get into some good shale here. The reason I like to do this every once in a while, uh, they get filled up with ash. And uh, plus I wanted to move this over kind of around the corner. But you can see that's some really nice shale right there. I would love to find a good spot on the property that I have access to, you know, like year round, uh, where I could just start a nice shale pit into the side of a hill. So whenever I need fill, it would be there. And uh, I got a few ideas, but that's something, you know, down the road, uh, we could always use fill here and there. Plus, once we get a dump truck, that's another marketable product that you could sell this pit's not real deep maybe about four feet deep four and a half feet deep but i'll make it about 18 feet long i'm just kind of cleaning things up a little bit move the excavator going a little bit longer here it's kind of tell hard to tell on video here but there's uh it's a pretty big hole i'm making right here i'm running the 30 inch bucket on the 57 it handles it just great even in this shale you know there's a little soil on top but it gets into pretty decent you know pretty tight material from there on down and what's nice about that i don't have to worry about the sides collapsing or anything like that it'll stay put last one was there for probably three years uh, this one will last just as long but you need a good burn pit down at the uh at the wood yard you know, we try to use as much of everything as you can, but you always generate uh, some kind of waste that it's really not worth fooling with. And uh, it's a nice place to get a good hot fire that you don't have to worry about. So I'm just about to the end here uh, for now. I'm going to hop on the skid loader and start kind of pushing off my spoil pile and filling in the old pit. Plus, I'll be able to store some stuff, you know, IBC totes and things right where this uh, old fire pit was. The shale's really nice for this. You know, it may settle a little bit, but just tracking it in with that machine, it weighs almost 13,000 pounds without a full bucket of material. Here I am just kind of finishing up the pit. I got a few more buckets to come out of there. And then we'll get back on the skid loader and uh, finish it up. The weather was actually pretty nice today. Yesterday, it was, it was ugly. I mean, we had floods, real severe storms. And this morning woke up, it was kind of frozen out, probably 18 degrees. And uh, I was able to kind of get down here and get to work. Once you get started and get into some of that dry material, it's uh, no big deal at all. So I got a bank right here, so I'm going to just going to kind of feather that material that's left up on that bank and dress it up just a little bit. But like I said, I could put a bunch of uh, full firewood baskets down here or anything that you don't need for a while, I could put down here. I'm just kind of tracking it in with the skid loader there. Put a little of this shale coating on the road coming down to it and just kind of finish it off here. Yeah, this took me a total of about uh, about an hour and 10 minutes, I guess, to dig the pit, clean everything up, fill the old one back in. All right, so I got my new burn pit dug. You always need to do that every once in a while, you know? Kind of start fresh. Got the old one filled in. Uh, it's actually not too bad working down here today, surprisingly, because we had a pile of rain yesterday. There was flooding. It's quite a mess, but then this morning it was about uh, 18, 19 degrees. So after we got the wrecks loaded up, I figured I'd come down here and uh, get some dry dirt out of the ground and I could work this up. But yeah, big improvement. So, I 
so welcome back to Outdoors with the Morgans. This is the first time I've been out the new road here uh, since we had all the rain the other day. We had a bunch of flooding. It's quite the mess, but the uh, road held up pretty well. Right down here at the bottom, it's a little soft, which I expected, because that's where all the water ends up. But we'll take care of that when the uh, time is right. So I made myself a very aggressive schedule for today, but I think it'll all work out. I'm out here in a clearing right now. Came out here to this trail camera, because I'm gonna take this battery pack out of here. These are the rechargeable ones and they actually uh, hold up pretty well. So this past fall, it was late in the fall, I planted that uh, winter rye out here just for some ground cover for the winter. It's not all done, and I knew the deer would like it. I was actually surprised because the deer, uh, they just devoured this stuff. There's still a little bit left, and we still get pictures out here, but first thing in the spring, I wanna have this clearing a little bit bigger and something a real nice food plot in here for the summer and then maybe in the fall we'll till it up and do it again we'll just have to see but we need to head down to the wood yard right now boy the uh, woodpeckers are getting after it this morning i've been seeing them and hearing them since i came out here Can you guys see that? Down here making noise. Here they come. But anyway, I just cleared off a spot here uh, to stockpile some slabs. What I like to get at some point is like a log bunk, you know, like you see in a log truck, uh, where I could dump these into it and then band them up and then I could sell them. I wouldn't ask much for them, but just enough to pay for the banding and the time, you know, fooling with them. And then I could sell them to people with like a dump truck or dump trailers. They could pull in, I could load them right out. just uh, loaded up some stickers here I'll take these up to the building and tonight I'll cut them to length but these are red oak one inch by one inch I think some people do like three quarters or three quarter by an inch I like one inch by one inch that'll give me uh, something to do tonight when it's raining I think it's gonna be pretty nice most of the day uh, but then later on this evening we're gonna have some rain and then again tomorrow but you remember I said I have a pretty aggressive schedule today. Uh, it's about 9.30 right now, and I'm going to go throw a few things in the truck, and we're going to head down to the cabin. I need to take care of a few things down there and also start kind of planning some things out because probably in about a month or so, you know, depending on the weather, 
Uh, we'll get started again down there, finishing the inside of the cabin, connecting the shower house to the cabin. There'll be all kind of stuff to do, but I didn't do much at all this past winter. It is just so much easier when it's warmer, at least for me. All right, it's about 10.30 right now. I wanted to leave a little bit sooner, but I had a few other things to take care of. But uh, we are on the road headed to the cabin. I'm gonna stop and fuel up the Super Duty, and we're gonna do a little mileage check and see what kind of mileage we get. I'm curious if the new Diamondback bed cover helps improve the mileage. I think it will a little bit. I don't know if it'll be noticeable or not, uh, but we'll just have to see. Even before that, the truck gets 23, 24 miles a gallon on the highway. Obviously not pulling anything, but uh, that's pretty good. That's really good, actually. All right, we uh, just filled up with fuel. We're going to reset the trip meter. All right, we're good to go. Have you ever seen a Rolls-Royce SUV? I never have until now so before I get on the road I was curious I had never seen a Rolls-Royce SUV and I just looked it up check this out MSRP starting at three hundred and seventy four thousand uh, dollars miles per gallon 12 city 19 highway got that beat here in the Super Duty the engine 6.7 liter v12 i've got a 6.7 in this power stroke diesel horsepower 563 horsepower uh he's got me on horsepower but i'm sure i've got way more torque but yeah three hundred and seventy four thousand dollars for an suv i i've never seen one before curb weight six thousand sixty nine pounds it's all-wheel drive it's an eight-speed automatic transmission Wow, huh, who would have known? So I've been on the road for a couple hours now. I'm about uh, 20 minutes from the cabin, but I just went through the town of Albright, West Virginia, and there's some sad news to report from there. Uh, the AWP, Allegheny Wood Products Mill, has closed down, and they've got, I think, six locations in West Virginia. I'm not sure of that. But sounds like about 850 people lost their jobs. I'm not sure if it'll ever reopen again. It doesn't sound like it will, but who knows. But anyway, the truck is averaging about 19.9 miles per gallon, which isn't too bad because there's a lot of hills to climb down here. Like the one I'm on right now is about four miles uphill. Well, made it to the cabin, and it, uh, at first glance, looks like uh, pretty much everything survived the winter, except for yeah, I got a big tree down back here. Lots of uh, pine needles and pine cones, but yeah, everything seems to be intact. We're gonna go back here and check this tree out. I hope, no, it's not the one. Okay, let me show you what I'm talking about here. I'll show you this one first. These are the ones you kind of have to watch where they get that Y right there. They'll end up rotten out and then all it takes is a big wind. One of these will peel right off. But I've had my eye on this one cherry tree Actually, since we uh, since we bought the property, I scoped this one out right away. Uh, 
that's a nice cherry right there right when i pulled in i thought it was this one right here look at that that's where what i'm talking about right there it rotted up there starts rotting down the tree and one wind brought this entire thing down there is a pretty cool uh burl right here sometime this spring down here we'll cut this up for firewood and i'll take that home and we'll saw that on the sawmill see what it looks like yeah boy huh we have uh we have a lot of work to do down here like just back here behind the cabin a lot of these trees these tops are still from when i cleared for the cabin spot but once we have everything done you know on the inside and we can stay down here for longer periods of time we will uh start working on all that stuff but it's pretty breezy down here today it's about uh, 10 degrees colder than it is at home by looking at the uh, weather the other day I think they got even more rain down here than uh, we did at home I want to show you something this battery pack for the spy point camera uh, this was about dead this is the one that I took out of that camera out in the clearing at home well I plugged it in at the house for about I'd say an hour and a half and then when I got in the truck I plugged it into the truck and the red light there's normally a red light right here where it's charging it finally turned green as I pulled through the gate down here couldn't have been uh, better timing but uh, they don't charge very fast that's for sure all right I got all the cameras around the cabin fixed up ready to go uh, we're gonna hike back in the woods here up on the hill to the sweet spot always something going on up there all right got this camera all squared away like I said there's always something happening up here turkeys where do you see this video clip from uh, just the other day? They are everywhere down here. That with deer. But I can't figure out exactly what it is they eat in here. I don't know. I don't know if it's just, you know, the seeds in the pine cones or what it is, but uh, they're everywhere. I'm going to take a hike back to the back corner of the property. I have never been back there. It's only 40 acres, and I've been down here dozens of times, but for some reason, I never made it all the way up to the back corner. So we'll go check it out. So I go over this like every time I'm down here, but you've got red pine and right below this is white pine. Then in here, you've got a few white pine scattered about and then more red pine up that direction. The red pine does not regenerate like the white pine does. If you look in here, I'm already starting to find small, white pine growing so eventually at some point if you don't do anything with this it'll all be white pine and no red pine the red pine will die off eventually and this will all be taken over with uh white pine i got a uh, tree stand right here i was up in this uh last fall and it's kind of funny the turkeys behind me it's like it was an invasion there was like a line of them must have been 35 of them and they all just came down through here in a big line so yeah i've never been uh all the way up in here 
kind of more of the same. Nice and flat in here. Like tabletop flat. But just more red pine. All right, I found the corner of the property. Uh, it's pretty easy to distinguish. There's a fence line right here. And you can just kind of tell, you can see all the pines, but we do have a little section of hardwoods right here. Some maple, a few white oak, a few cherry. And the neighbors, they've got a trail right over there that's you know just on their side of the property. Real nice people, I've met them. But yeah, never been up here before. Nice little spot though. And when I say up here, uh, it is the highest point on the property, close to it. But over the entire 40 acres, I think the total elevation change is probably only about 35 feet. So there's nothing uh, steep, all relatively flat, which is very hard to find in West Virginia. little lone cherry tree amongst all the pines. It's funny how they can do that. Another big cherry. Got a bad spot in it there. Just like those other ones I was telling you about. So right over there, about uh, 75 yards, is that sweet spot that I tell you about. I don't know what the attraction is, but I have pictures and video of everything. I think just about every animal in West Virginia, right over there. From deer, turkey, coyote, foxes, fisher, raccoons, possum, anything you can think of. Another nice cherry right there. If you can't already tell, I spend a lot of time uh, looking at trees. I do. No matter where I'm at, I'm always looking at trees. All right, so I got back from my little hike about a half hour ago, and I've been inside the cabin doing some measuring. Uh, the next step in there will be insulation, and I don't think we're going to do that. I found a company that's probably about 35 or 40 minutes from here, and I have found in the past uh, with insulation, normally those guys can do it cheaper than what you can buy it for. At least that's been my experience. And then we'll get the wood stove in and then we can start finishing the interior of the cabin, which is mostly gonna be tongue and groove pine like we did in the game room and the building at home. And it shouldn't take too long. The whole cabin you know, like the downstairs is just about as big as our kitchen in the uh, game room of the building. So the whole key will be, though, to bring everything with you that you need each time you come down here. Because you just don't run into the garage and grab what you forgot. You know what I mean? So that'll be a challenge. I think I'm losing my voice. I don't know what's going on. Maybe it has something to do with it uh, being like 15 degrees in the morning and then... 60 and rain the next day and back to freezing. I don't know. I feel fine, but uh, <clears throat> my voice has been a little raspy the last couple days. All right, I'm going to get everything buttoned up here, and then uh, next stop is going to be Bass Pro. It's right up outside of Morgantown, West Virginia. I normally don't buy a whole bunch, but usually end up coming home with some more precious metals, but uh, that's about it. I prefer the Cabela's over in Wheeling, they're both nice stores, but the Cabela's over by Wheeling is much bigger, and they got way more stuff than the Bass Pro in Morgantown, but Bass Pro is always on my way home. All right, I am just leaving Bass Pro. One of the nice things about West Virginia, one of the many things, no sales tax on precious metals. I don't know why, I'm not gonna question it, but uh, yeah, no sales tax, love it.